Welcome to Construction Genius. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing the critical topic of leadership transitions. As the president of your construction company, you may be in a point of your business where you're thinking of promoting someone into a senior leadership role. And that senior leader is now going to be taking things off of your plate. And as a result of that, the dynamic of relationships within your organization is going to change. So what we're going to cover in this episode is the challenges and potential hurt feelings that may arise when you promote a senior project manager, let's say, into a division manager role, particularly the concerns of former direct reports who may lose direct access to you as the president of your company. Then I'll dive into a comprehensive six-step plan that's designed to ensure a smooth transition, maintain strong relationships, and then provide necessary support for the new division manager's success. And then finally, we'll be talking throughout the session, um, throughout the episode, about the keys to navigating leadership transitions effectively, with a focus on open communication, patience, and empathy with both the person who's getting promoted and the people who are now reporting to that individual. The whole idea is to help your construction business thrive during times of change. So I know you're going to enjoy this episode here today. Uh, give me any feedback that you like from the session. And I really appreciate you listening to Construction Genius. This is Eric Anderton, and you're listening to Construction Genius, a leadership masterclass. Thomas Edison said that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. If you're a construction leader, you know all about the perspiration, and this show is all about the 1% inspiration that you can add to your hard work to help you to improve your leadership. Some time ago, I was having a chat with one of my clients, the president of a subcontracting company, very successful, very well run. And he was thinking about how can I transition the company from me and my ownership to the next generation? There's a lot of moving parts here going on, but one of the key roles or one of the key things that he was focusing on was the promotion of a senior project manager to a division manager. And what was most interesting about this promotion is that in putting this person in the division manager role, reporting lines would then shift. The president had a whole uh, group of people reporting to him directly. He had developed relationships with them, and those relationships were very strong. And with this new shift, that was an essential part of the transition and the growth of the company, these people would now be reporting to the division manager. And so the question came up in our conversation, how could he best manage this transition? And think about why that's important. Well, number one, you have to establish the new division manager in his new role. But also you have to deal with the fact that the people who previously reported to the president are now going to be reporting to this division manager. And there may be some hurt feelings there. There may be some um, sense of losing access to the president. And all of that has to be managed very well. Um, another thing that has to be managed, and you have to keep this in mind, is that if they're used to coming to you as the president of the company and now they have a new direct report, they may still be doing end arounds to you and not going to the division manager. And you might actually be allowing that consciously or not. But the whole point is, is that if you're going to execute successful transitions, you have to be able to elevate people into new roles and then establish them well in that new role. Let's talk about how you can do that. Number one, you need to announce the promotion, obviously. Now, the bad way to do that is just to send out an email. Fred is now the division manager, and you guys are all reporting to him. Obviously, that is not the way to do it, and if you're thinking about doing it that way, you're missing the boat. So what you need to do is gather the team for a candid discussion. And share the reasons for the promotion of the person from a senior project manager to the division manager. Talk to them openly about the transition that the company is going through so that they have an understanding of the logic behind the decision. 
Express your confidence in the new division manager. Understand that people are looking to you. They, in their minds, they think that your company is a reflection of you. And it's true. <laughs> it is, for better or for worse. So you must express your confidence in this new division manager. The second thing you want to do is set up personal transition meetings with the division manager and each one of their new direct reports with you in that meeting. So let's say that division manager now has four people reporting to him that previously reported to you. Set up four separate meetings. And in those meetings, what you want to be able to do is address any concerns the direct report has with the new reporting structure of the company. Set clear expectations for communication and give them practical examples. So for instance, if you're talking to a project manager who used to report to you, who's now going to report to the division manager, make sure that they understand that if there's an issue on a project, if there's a change order that needs to be handled, if there's a customer issue, if there's an issue with a superintendent, they are going to go to the new division manager to discuss that issue. And it's not because you don't care, but it's because of the transition the company's going through and the way that you have decided to take the company, this new reporting structure needs to take place. Acknowledge the fact that you understand that this person who maybe has been reporting to you for the last 10 years is now going to have a new direct report. Their feelings may be hurt. They may be wondering, is my access going to be cut off? Will my voice still be heard? Acknowledge that in that meeting and assure them that through this new reporting structure, they'll still be able to have their concerns voiced. And of course, you're not going anywhere um, and you'll still have a relationship. And let me just go to that for a really a, mo a moment here. In reassuring your former direct reports, you want to emphasize their continued value to the company. And the way that you can do this practically is just by casually going around, checking in with them from time to time. And you may already do this. But you want to keep that the lifeblood of that personal relationship there because if they feel that you're continuing to invest in that and they see you as the head of the company, obviously it's going to help to lock in their commitment to your organization. So practice a little bit of leadership by walking around and make sure that you are touching your former direct reports on a semi-regular basis. But as you're doing that, be aware that sometimes they may bring up issues. Keep in mind the reporting structure that you've already established with their new boss, their new, the, the, the new division manager, and just gently point them that way. Thank you for listening to today's episode. And just a quick break to remind you about my book, Construction Genius. Effective, hands-on, practical, simple, no BS leadership strategy, sales, and marketing advice for construction companies. I'm really encouraged by the response to this book. We're getting five-star reviews on Amazon. And I think the reason why is because you pick up this book, you read it, and you can immediately take away action items that are going to help you to be a better leader, to succeed as far as strategy is concerned, and also to sell more work to the right clients, to the right projects, in the right locations. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty sweet. So this is my offer to you. It's a special offer. If you purchase 10 or more copies of this book, shoot me an email, eric at constructiongenius.com with the receipt. What I will do is I will offer to come into your organization via Zoom and do a free 30 to 60 minute call with your leadership team about the contents of the book, answer any questions that they have. And then in addition to that, give you a little bit of training on how someone can be successful in a new role. It's information that's not directly in this book. So if you'd like to do that, go out, purchase 10 or more copies of Construction Genius, send me the book receipt, and we'll get that scheduled, okay? Email me, Eric at Construction Genius, and just put in the subject line, 10 copies of Construction Genius. Go out to Amazon, grab your copies today, and now let's get back to the podcast. Now, another thing you want to do, obviously, when you promote this new division manager is spend time mentoring them because they're going to be entering into new relationships with people who haven't reported to them before. And as you know, it takes time to build those relationships. Their style is probably different than your style. That's going to be a bit of a shock to your former direct reports. 
And so perhaps you can give the division manager some insights into how your direct reports function, some of their strengths and weaknesses, but you need to make sure that you're mentoring them. And in my opinion, when you promote this person into the division manager role, if you're not already meeting weekly with them, you must do that. If you're not, you're dropping the ball as far as that's concerned. So you want to help them to adapt to that new role as quickly as possible. Then let me give you a little more insights in terms of maintaining camaraderie. And what I would do if I were you, if you're not doing this already, is set up um, regular social events. And when I say regular, I'm going to say, why don't you do it every six months at a minimum? And a social event with the team where you can break bread with your former direct reports and the division manager. Maybe you take them out to lunch. Uh, maybe you go to Top Golf or something like that, where you can break bread. And, and what I would do is set up a social situation where you can see your former direct reports interacting in a casual manner with the new division manager. That will give you some excellent data on the strength of their relationship, but it will also give you an opportunity to stay in touch with your former direct reports and make sure that they understand that they're still a value to the company. Then what I would do is schedule a follow-up meeting with each one of your um, former direct reports, their, the division manager who they now report to, and yourself, after about six or nine months, just to check in with them. Now, in giving you these recommendations, I'm assuming that you are focusing on developing strong relationships with uh, the division manager. You have a relationship with him and with the direct reports where a frank discussion can happen in that one-on-one -on -one meeting. But as you're in that one-on-one -on -one meeting, again, pay attention to body language, to subtle cues that tell you something about the strength of their relationship. Obviously, the numbers that they're producing from their projects are going to tell you something about the strength of their relationship because construction is a relationship game. And if there's a radical change in the, in the numbers, uh, particularly towards the negative, that's going to give you data that maybe there's an issue with your former direct reports and their new boss, the division manager. But those follow-up meetings can be very, very helpful. So in conclusion, what you want to be able to do, again, let me just walk you through, is you want to make that announcement publicly, okay? Giving your, lo your logic behind it and your reasons, expressing your confidence in this new division manager. Then what you want to do is have those personal one-on-one -on -one meetings with you, your former direct report, and the new division manager explaining the transition, making sure that any um, issues or concerns are addressed. Then what you want to be able to do is emphasize the continued value of the direct report, your former direct report to the company. Make sure you're mentoring the division manager. Make sure that you're maintaining camaraderie with those social events. Schedule a follow-up meeting. And don't forget, earlier as I said, manage a bit, lead a bit by walking around, keeping in touch with those former direct reports. And again, this doesn't necessarily have to be a completely time-consuming thing because obviously the reason you're putting someone in this division manager role is to free up your time to work on higher um, level tasks that relate to the transition of the organization. But if you ever want to be able to build your company where you are not so much working in the business but working on the business, it's essential that you manage these transitions well. And so my recommendation is that you consider the steps that I've brought up and think about how you can implement them as you're going through transitions in your organization. And remember, as you're doing this, it's not necessarily going to be easy. There's going to be bumps along the road. You may at some point promote someone into a role that they're not a fit for, and you might have to make changes. You may eventually alienate a former direct report in a way that you wish you hadn't, but that occurs as well. Again, keep in mind your overall strategic goal. Keep in mind where you want to take the company. Think about the structure of the organization that you need to establish in order to achieve that goal and make sure you have the right people in the right seats in your organization with appropriate reporting structures so that you can take your company where you want it to go. Let me finish by saying this. The outline that I'm giving you here today, this all took place in a conversation that I had one-on-one -on -one with the president of a construction company who is my uh, client. And I have these conversations all the time in a coaching environment. And we're going back and forth. We're talking about his concerns. We're talking about how we can best manage this transition. And we developed much of the plan that I'm sharing with you here today. 
My point in saying that is that this is the type of conversation that can be tremendously beneficial to you. And you may benefit from meeting one-on-one -on -one with an executive coach and having these types of conversations. And perhaps there's a fit between you and I, where as the president of a construction company, you need an outside sounding board to help you through these kinds of conversations. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a link that you can click on in the description. Um, and you can then go to my website. You can book in a time to chat with me for 10 minutes to figure out if or how I can help. I'm not a fit for everyone. I just want to say that some people are like, you know, Eric, I don't think it's a fit. And I'll talk to um, people who won't reach out to me sometimes. And I'll say, no, I don't think I'm a fit. So in that 10 minutes, though, we'll be able to figure out pretty quickly together whether or not it's worth scheduling another time to further discuss about how I might be able to help in terms of executive coaching. So reach out to me if, you, if that is something that would be of interest to you. Appreciate your time here today.